Material Science and Engineering at Rutgers is about to celebrate its 120th year. We started originally as a ceramics department and we expanded into all materials. Some of the things that we're best known for are connections with the glass industry and the development of fiber optic engineering. We have many students now who have worked in the area of the Gorilla Glass that's on the iPhone. The newest members of our department represent the extensions of material science into newer fields, for example, nanotechnology, and especially in areas involving nanoparticles and plasmonics. Many of these topics have fit nicely with traditional topics. We've had a, a number of collaborations. We've incorporated nanoparticles into subject eye research, which is sol gel processing. With plasmatic materials, we can make antennas, we can make filters, we can make solar cells or optoelectronic devices, or we can make sensors for biology and diagnostics. And the Fabris Lab works on integrating plasmonic nanoparticles to address health challenges and energy challenges, not only as they concern the developed countries, but also, and importantly, the developing world. My group has been working for many, many years looking at implementing these materials for the detection of diseases. To look at cancer, to look at how we can diagnose it, how we, we can stratify patients in specific categories for therapy. But what is important also are the new applications, such as recently our work on viruses. When a, a, a person is infected with a virus, at the beginning there is a small viral load, but still we need to detect them. And so our particles allow us to amplify the response that the virus gives us. And we hope that we'll be able to implement it to integrate the techniques that are currently used because our approach would be much lower cost, much lower complexity. And when we hope that that could be a reality soon. One of the projects is to take advantage of these nanoparticles uh, they are rare shape uh, nanoparticles called nanostars. It has very spiky structures. And we use these nanoparticles to enhance the uh, Raman scattering of a particular uh, fluorophore, sort of a Raman reporter. And we use this DNA nanostar conjugated structure to detect uh, specific RNAs uh, that, that is relevant for uh, identifying a specific virus is called influenza A virus. You know, this technology can be uh, applied to SARS-CoV-2, you know, the COVID-19, or a lot of different uh, viruses. And uh, the same thing that we can apply this technology for cancer cell detection. My group has been working with Dr. Fabrice's group towards the development of antiviral glasses. The aim is to design glass compositions which can actually degrade slowly and kill viruses. My approach has been to understand the molecular structure of glasses. How can we tailor the atomic structure of glass leading to how the glass will actually behave in the human body. We have a state-of-the-art glass synthesis lab where we can actually melt glasses at temperatures as high as 1700 degrees Celsius. My research group is called the Micromechanics, a deformation research group. And what we focus on is understanding what governs the mechanical behaviors of materials in terms of what's going on at the scale of individual defects and atomic structures. If we want to develop uh, new materials for implants, for example, as in some of the work Professor Gold's doing, we have to make sure that those materials are durable in the human body. In the case of two-dimensional materials, for example, uh, there's a potential to revolutionize semiconductors and move beyond the constraints that are imposed by conventional semiconductors. But to do that, we have to figure out how to manipulate the properties of those materials, for example, the band gap, in order to achieve that. In my lab, we work on studying electronic and optical interactions between nanostructures and semiconductors. We have sort of two focuses. One, it's on very fundamental research of the development of new types of nanostructured photonic devices, like nano lasers, nano antennas. Our other focus is on applied technologies, like improving the efficiency of light emitting devices used for display and lighting applications, and also for improving light harvesting in solar cells to boost their energy conversion efficiency. And we also have some applications in thin film lasers to improve their overall power conversion efficiency. 
So we've synthesized carbon dots in our lab using natural products. They're a type of new light emitting nanostructure and they have emission properties that depend on their solvent environment. The emission changes or is activated by applying a certain solvent uh, in contrast to water, which is the native medium in which the carbon dot is dispersed. That this has significant opportunities in thin film display applications used for cell phones, TV monitors, and general lighting applications. They also have applications in thin film solar cells that are being used to convert uh, sunlight to electricity for renewable energy. The material science department has had a storied history. I expect it to continue into the future, following up on some of the areas that they've been strong in in the past and expanding into new areas, working in areas related to biomedical materials as well as electronic materials and this new area of uh, modeling behavior using computational material science.